how can we create this technology as like an empathy tool? How can we understand the emotions of other animals if we share actual brain structures that are very similar to them? Like there must be a way and is this vessel, um, this carrier bag, could this be the way that we um, can unlock this? So then we started to look at Paul Baki Rita, who is a Mexican neuroscientist and he did, he figured out the study of um, sensory substitution. So we'll just show you a video on this now. We don't see with the, with the eyes, for example. We don't hear with the ears. All of that goes on in the brain. Remember, if, you're, if, if I'm looking at you, the image of you doesn't get beyond my retina, just the back of my eye. From there to the brain, to the rest of the brain, it's pulses pulses along nerves. Well, those pulses aren't any different than the pulses from the big toe. It's the way the information they carry is in the frequency and the pattern of pulses. And so if you can train the brain to extract that kind of information, then you don't need the eye to see. You can have an artificial eye. So what Paul Bakirita discovered was sensory substitution. And what essentially that is, is that he realized that you could substitute one sense that maybe you no longer have for another sense. So in the, his famous case study was he had a patient who was blind and he basically um, put some senses, this sensory technology onto his tongue. And that was connected to three cameras. And basically the camera acted as the eye for the patient. And every time the camera moved around and looked where he would essentially be looking if he could see, it, it basically translated it into sensory image. So it would basically make the image kind of similar to how you draw on somebody's back or something when you try to like say, like, guess what I'm drawing. And um, slowly the patient would learn what was being um, visualized. And because how, how, your, how it works is that the retina is only a, it's basically just a, it's like a device but how it works is it's not the eye that makes you see it's all the it's like the nerves and the, the pulse and the sensation that gets to the eye so what he discovered was that you could almost like um retrain the brain to see with a different device so the camera became the eye and the blind person actually began to see so it's not just like the blind person just feels it and translate it, he starts to pick up the image. So the patient, he started to pick up the actual image of what was around him. Oh, and then, really, I'm sorry. No, you can leave. Yeah, I was just gonna say, this really opens up the possibilities of how we can actually experience the world in front of us and what's around us that we can, it, he really proved, I mean, he was one of the most groundbreaking groundbreaking neuroscientists in kind of pushing this idea of neuroplasticity because in the past neuroscientists sort of believed that or it was a previous misconception that the brain kind of stopped developing and changing and growing after childhood and almost that it was as a piece of hardware it was just fixed at that point but alongside other recent advances and kind of Paul Bakiruta's experiments he they were proving that this isn't true the brain really can and does change throughout our lives and it's, it has this plasticity in it we can teach it to or we don't even need to teach it anything we can just allow it to process inputted information or data and it will figure out what to do with those mm -hmm. with those with that new information and then you train it basically to be able to read it so through training and learning you then be able to have like almost like a new way of perceiving that you was not biologically there previously. So <laughs> then we looked at David Eagleman, who so unfortunately Paul Bakirita passed away a while ago. I'm not really sure when, but he, so David Eagleman took his research and then started to like add on to that. And he decided to look at what, well, if we can have sensory substitution, then surely we can have sensory addition. So that is the idea that rather than having replacing a sense with another sense that is missing, what about if you can create a new sense 
and rewire the brain to have a new sense, which kind of aligns a lot to the, what we've been looking at. Is this possible? Is it possible to implant a new um, new way of perceiving through re rewiring or retraining the brain um, to express it through senses? So what David Eagleman looked into was looking at the looking at our umwelt. So our umwelt in ethology is the world as it is experienced by a particular organism. And so what we can see is less than a tenth, 10 trillionth of what is out there. So our objective reality isn't actually objective reality. It is our objective reality within the confinement of our particular organism that we exist in. And what he was looking at is how can we use technology, how can we use technology to add a completely new kind of sense to expand the human umfeld? So how can we see beyond what we, um, what we individually perceive? So what we were kind of looking into, what we've been kind of looking into first is can humans develop an experience of an animal? Can it connect emotionally to an animal or feel something that in the way that an animal could feel using this, this kind of theory? So David Eagleman created the PH model, which stands for potato head model, which is kind of like you a, a bit of a joke that you can place the mouth where the ears are, the nose where the lips are. And it's essentially, we have these biological receptors, your nose, your mouth, and you can rewire it, plug and play it into a different part of your body or add and maybe a new sense, maybe tan, you can have a pig nose. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I I'm always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to read some quotes from David Eagleman because he explains it much better than I do. <laughs> so the brain doesn't know or care what the data comes from. It just figures out what to do with it and does it efficiently. Eagleman calls this the pH model of evolution. Um, I use the name to emphasize that all these senses that we know and love, like our eyes, our ears and fingertips, these are merely peripheral plug and play devices. You stick them in and you're good to go. The brain figures out what to do with the data that comes in. Our brain isn't hardware or software, it is liveware. As it is always changing, it's constantly reconfiguring itself to optimize its function in the world. You are changing the hardware at all points. I guess it's about recognizing how our the structures that we exist in are actually a lot more fluid than we imagine them to be. So, it, in creating this technology, which is to expand our own belt or kind of expand our experience beyond our perception of being human, it's really about using the tools that are available to us, which are maybe just we haven't really tapped into yet.